Well, the luxury electric car maker Faraday Future recently struck a deal to go public in a SPAC transaction, merging with Property Solutions Acquisition Corp. The combined company will be valued at around $3.4 billion, and it's set to close in the second quarter. The CEO of Faraday Future, Karsten Breitfeld, is joining us right now to talk with us about the deal and about the plans here. Karsten, thank you for being here. Um, there was also the recent news that you all have, were talking to Geely, the Chinese car maker, about them potentially contract manufacturing your vehicle. And so the two pieces of news together, I just wanted to talk to you about the timeline for when we will start to see Faraday Future cars. Um, I know that you have a number of, of people who have orders in. When are they going to get their vehicles? So good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, we are going to launch our first product, the FF91, here in the U.S. out of California, uh, 12 months after the deal closes. Um, so the first product will be shipped from the U.S. to, to the rest of the world. And then you were mentioning Geely uh, for our market entry in China. Uh, we are setting up a joint venture. We are discussing a setup of a joint venture. Uh, and Geely will be one of the partners there, uh, which will give us, um, which will speed up our market entry uh, into China. Karsten, can you uh, can you explain? I mean, Faraday Future has been around uh, for a good bit. Uh, how, but it has gone through some some troubles here. You were recently brought in to uh, really drive the company's vision going forward. But the founder, Jia Yuting, he's still uh, now he's the uh, chief product and user officer. Uh, he ran into some financial difficulties last year. What is your relationship with him, and and how, what's his role in the company right now? So Faraday Future is, uh, I think, the only uh, company in this field who bring two worlds together, which is the car industry, the car world, the car experience from one side. I have 25 years in this industry. I spent 20 years with BMW. I, I made the BMW i8 program uh, become reality. Uh, and Jai Ting is coming from the, from the internet side, from the user ecosystem side. And these are the two DNAs of our company. And together, this creates a st strong product and strong business models. Uh, when I came in 16 months ago, we had to do some changes in the company. We, we focused it, we focused it uh, more on execution. We had to rework the governance. Uh, the founder had to, to um, resolve some, some personal uh, situations and personal issues. But now this is all gone and all uh, behind us. And we are looking very much forward to launch our first product with the proceeds of this transaction uh, we, we just announced. When do you when do you plan to start making a, a, a mass market car that that would rival a, a Tesla Model Three? So um, you know we, we are building a top premium brand, and a top premium brand always starts with a halo product. So the first product, the FF91, will be top luxury. It will shine. It will define the brand, and then. Um, Maybe around 18 months later, you will see the next product going going down one market segment and uh, competing more in the Tesla Model S and Model X uh, area. And then um, after this, we are going to have a third product, and this will then uh, had uh, address the real market, uh, the, the the real um, volume segments like like Tesla Model Three or, or Model Y. You know, Carson, you mentioned your experience with BMW and your involvement with the i8 program over there. I'm curious from Given that experience, why right now is the moment that it seems, um, you know, the electric vehicle future is, is kind of arriving? I mean, it seems like the, the acceleration point is here. And, um, you know, what were the challenges for the industry, whether it's traditional OEM or Tesla or, you know, Faraday, um, getting from kind of concept maybe 10, 15 years ago to the point today where I think a lot of consumers are going to have access to these vehicles um, sooner than maybe they think? You know, this is funny. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when I still was at BMW, everyone told me that Tesla will never, can never be a successful company for several reasons. Uh, if you look to the valuation today, then you know it's, uh, the valuation is more than all the premium car companies together. Uh, so things are apparently changing. We are at a pivot point right now. And you know that some of the biggest economies in the world are discussing bans of gas cars by 2030. 2030 is nine years from now, and this is a little more than one generation of cars. So the markets are changing completely right now and at a very high speed. So it, it, this is an exponential growth coming up, and this puts companies like us in a, 
in a very good position. Now, uh, Faraday is differentiated from, from, from other startups. We are very close to production. It's less than 12 months to go. Uh, we invested uh, up to $2 billion up to date uh, into technology and into products. So we are not a startup in that, in, in that sense. And, and we think that we can have a very, very strong market entry very soon. Karsten, you, uh, so Faraday won't have revenue this year. Now, you are planning to go from no revenue this year to $21.4 billion in revenue by 2025. In 2025, what, how many units are you making to drive close to $22 billion in, sale, in sales? And, and where, where are the bulk of those sales coming from? Which market? So, you know, um, I'm, I'm German and I'm engineer from my background. And, and German engineers always have a certain work ethics. And this is uh, under, the, uh, under promise and, and over deliver. So the business plan we have right now is quite conservative. Um, um, I personally think we can do more than, than, than we have in it. So we start with quite low volumes and then we scale to a couple of hundred thousand units uh, by 2025, which given the markets, uh, how they develop right now is, is absolutely realistic. Uh, if you ask about the market split, then, then uh, we are a global company. Uh, as I said, we are going to launch in the U.S. in California. We are going to deliver from California to the rest of the world in the beginning. Uh, clearly, China is uh, the most important EV market right now and will continue to, to, to be this. Uh, so I expect that um, maybe something like 50% of our volume on the midterm will go to China uh, and the rest will be split between the U.S. and Europe. Karsten, thanks so much for being here this morning. I know it's early on the West Coast, so we appreciate it. Karsten Breitfeld is the Faraday Future CEO. Hope to catch up with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day.